Welcome back to the channel everyone. I'm still a little sick, so if I sound funny, I apologize. Be sure to hit that like button if you hate being sick. All right, so what I wanted to come out and talk to everybody about while I was doing my oxygen therapy out in the greenhouse, all this free oxygen that our plants are rebreathing out, I wanted to come out, I wanted to do a little harvest, which I grabbed enough food for me and my family to eat up right now. And I wanna talk about watering in winter and I want to talk about solar draw and how much energy you're drawing from certain solar systems. So I guess first we will jump right into the little harvest here. So we'll jump around. You can see little bug bites. That does not bother me. When plants get bitten by bugs, we are having a natural reaction. Those plants are going to fight and basically grow and regrow. And it's going to boost up their own little immune system in each plant. When they're getting bitten, they're having to heal themselves. So this is our little purple tat soy. We got a decent little cluster of purple tat soys here. Got a nice big old heading collared leaf. I just been picking one from the bottom every once in a while here. Got a nice little pak choy or tat soy i think this is actually tat soy i believe this is a very good high protein food right there we've got some of our perpetual spinach shards and these are delicious these are really really good for you we've got some of our what dinosaur kale i don't know the exact name for it it's just got that lumpy dinosaur looking skin that is a very sweet kale and it's full of nutrients very very good for you so we've got our little red vein sorrel here too i've got a few leaves of our red vein sorrel there and i'm surprised to see that red vein sorrel still alive in the greenhouse because this green sorrel or our regular garden sorrel is very very cold hardy it is one of the first things that pops up for us outside the greenhouse in springtime i'm gonna take a break from that real quick and jump down here so we've got these two little windows and this is just kind of dead space all of this dead space i haven't been doing anything but i forgot i had my little sorrel plant down here and it's throwing off a bunch of growth it's really amazing to me because it's within six to eight inches of the outside and it's not insulated there but it does get all the sun when it is sunny outside we haven't seen the sun in a couple days here and it's fully fully overcast today we've had wintry mix and rain and snow stuff it just sucks so being sick and having to deal with that is even worse so i thought i would just come out and grab some of this food up and show everybody what we got going on so jumping from these kales and sorrels over to the regular kale here this is a beautiful kale plant we've got tons and tons of kale and different kinds lots and lots of life growing in this whole bed very good to come and harvest We've got a little bit of our sorrel here a lot of food lots of free food and that is in the middle of december we're sitting like december 15th or 16th here and we've got all of this food still growing and still producing for us i came out and i'm just trying to thin through everything so it gets a little better oxygen flow because these are in tunnels so every once in a while i gotta come out and i gotta lift these tunnels up and i gotta refresh the oxygen even though we've got our compost heater blowing through this whole thing this is a long about 40 50 foot tunnel tunnel on this whole bed so we've got all of this that we've got to replenish the oxygen through and let that moisture out you don't want to hold all that moisture in there all the time and why you don't hold that moisture in you can see some of our dill had fallen we've got a little mold coming up on some of our dill here and this dill i didn't really expect to continue to grow we actually have dill that we can harvest and eat and it is perfect dill right there that is awesome Being able to come out and eat fresh dill before Christmas is pretty darn cool. So we didn't come out here to watch me eat. So we are going to talk about watering your plants. So I got this little DIY contraption here. So it is very simple, very straightforward. We've got that little string. It's kind of floating right now because I just refilled it. It was pretty dry. That string will just go down as the water level goes down. You can see this little drop of water coming off. So that releases one little drop every 20 minutes or so as it flows through. This little bottle lasts us about three or four days. So you can see how this is kind of graded. It kind of slopes down. So I put our little water bottle up here. So this will continually drip and drip into this whole little bed here. I just transplanted all these out. You can see that we're getting real decent leaf growth. So we're getting growth. These are only about a week old transplants 
from our little bed down there. We pulled them up and individually pricked them out into all of these little spots. And I'm harvesting these heading collards. I'm kind of trying to give this a little more light here so we can get a little more light to all of these little plants. But it's really quite exciting to be able to see all of these plants really grow over the last week here. Now this is quite a small watering container and it only lasts about three or four days. So that doesn't give you much time and it doesn't get you much water. It only waters about this little two to three square foot area but it's holding a lot of life right here so I have to have some water up here. Now if you're trying to water a larger area you can use a five gallon bucket and use a string or whatever kind of rope cotton string uh, shirt. I've used pieces of my old shirts and it works all the same. You just got to use some type of fabric that allows the water to flow through it and it will naturally draw itself out. Now one more way I've been doing this, move my little harvest here. So I've got this bucket and I've got dirt in the bucket. Where am I going with this? So we've got little holes all around the bottom of the bucket, maybe five or six holes in there. I didn't want too many holes because it would drain too fast. So we take our bucket of dirt and we fill this with water and all of that dirt compacts down at the bottom like mud. So if you fill this whole bucket up, you can get over a week of watering time. All of those little holes in the bottom will slowly seep it out and it waters about a five foot ring around the area of your bucket. So we can just take this bucket and set it around one of our beds, fill it up with water. As long as we got dirt in it, it will last us about a week or more. And that really beats coming out here and filling up homemade jugs or unraveling my hose in the middle of winter, which I can't even do. We can't use our well. So being able to water out here is very crucial and it's very important to be able to water. You don't want everything drying out, but it's also important that you don't have it too wet. So that being said, if it's too cold out and you don't have any heat in your greenhouse and you're just kind of doing a passive solar greenhouse, you're not going to want a whole lot of water and you're going to want to use some type of small little drip water where it's only putting maybe one drop every 10 to 20 minutes as opposed to a whole five gallon bucket constantly dripping uh, out of five or six holes and soaking in kind of like a sponge and just slowly pulling that water throughout the entire bed. You don't want that to freeze up at nighttime. You gotta be very careful because you will freeze your plants and you will freeze your roots and then everything will be dead. So having this compost heating system really benefits us and we're able to come out here and water and get everything watered in and not have to worry about things dying. So talking about our compost heater, I wanna go talk about solar power and solar draw, but I wanna go look at our kale sprouts real quick here. All this kale is coming up really, really quickly. I am really, really glad to see all of this. We've got decent growth on that. Some of them are actually putting up little leaves already. Very cool stuff to be able to do this. It's almost Christmas time and we are just getting lots of growth. Our beets didn't fare so well. They didn't like getting too cold before we covered this bed up. So aside from eating the actual beet roots, you can eat the beet tops also. These are very good for you, very nutritious, and it allows the plant to keep growing. So we're not just harvesting one time. We're able to come through here and pull a lot of these beets out. We can get a lot of little harvest off all these leaves and stuff, even though they don't look the best, they are still decent and we've been eating them. I just saw this monster turnip. I forgot about that guy. That's a decent looking turnip right there. Okay, so let's go jump down to the other end and talk about some solar power. So here we are down at the solar banking side of the greenhouse and our methane collection side. We got everything going on down here. Got to clean my little barrel off. I still got to figure out how I'm going to connect my pecs to this barrel, but I really want to get some water inside here. Even if I don't connect it to my pecs, I want to use it for a thermal mass, just storing heat in it from the sun at least. So why I came down here is because I wanted to talk about heating and using solar power to heat or using solar power for fans or moving water. So the most high intense draw is going to be from some type of heater. Even if you're trying to run a tiny little space heater, it is going to basically draw all of the energy out of your system very, very quickly. You're not gonna be able to run it any longer than the sun is up at least. 
And even if the sun is up, you might only get to cycle that little space heater because it is gonna be such a great draw. You're gonna to have to have some type of major solar array and solar bank to be able to run just even the tiniest of little heaters. So running water is just about the same thing. This little solar pump is using a lot of electricity. This little solar pump is still purging every once in a while, but we're not getting nearly what we could if we had this plugged in or if we had a larger solar system. So that being said, the next thing is fans. Running a solar fan, you can see that this fan's running, this fan's running, and they have not shut off all day. Now those fans are still running, even though we've had a wintry mix and a ton of heavy clouds, we haven't had any sunlight today. So I'm very thankful to have my geothermal running and I'm very thankful to have my compost heater because if I didn't set up a fan and I was only trying to run water through here, we might not get such good results. We're sitting about 55 degrees in the greenhouse right now. And like I said, it's like 29, 30 degrees outside, no solar activity. And before we started compost heating and before we put the second layer on, when we had cold temps and we had no sun, one single layer of poly was holding about maybe 10 degrees above the outside ambient temp. So now we're sitting 20, 25 degrees above the ambient outside temp with no sun to actively heat this up. Really wanted to make a point about the solar draw of different solar accessories and how much energy you're gonna need to actually supply those systems. I could probably run a ton of those little solar fans on a cloudy day like this, but I can only run my little 12 volt DC water pump for maybe five to 10 seconds at a time every couple minutes. And that is not the best, but it is helping us because we are still pushing water through and that I have water coming out in that end. That means we push our hot water through this whole bed and we are still heating and actively heating the floor with the water, but it is not a very big amount. We are not getting a whole lot of energy flowing through there. So I believe we're a lot more reliant on these little solar fans running than the actual water itself. And John Payne himself was using the water, not constantly. He was running it into storage tanks and heating his house transferring from groundwater to 140 degrees Fahrenheit, but he wasn't doing that 24 seven. Like we're trying to run this as much as we possibly can and it just runs all the time if it has the energy to do so. Entertaining actually being able to watch everything progress throughout this whole greenhouse, being able to watch everything grow, being able to sprout on the floor of the greenhouse and being able to harvest all this free organic food is gold in my book. We are able to supplement some food in the winter time and eventually we want to progress to being able to supplement all our food in the winter time off of our own land here. So if anyone's got any questions today, definitely drop in the comments below. I love to hear everybody's ideas, suggestions, questions, feedback, anything you guys got, drop it in the comments for me. And a big shout out to all of my subscribers. You guys are awesome and I keep getting more and more all the time. So everybody who's new, thank you very much. And to all the OG subscribers, thanks for sticking around.